In today's video, I will be showing you how to use the OBD Link MX Plus to do some data logging in order to calculate volumetric efficiency. Now, this will only work on vehicles that have mass airflow sensors, uh, but this one does. We're going to be doing this on a 2004 Ford Expedition. So I'll get all hooked up and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we have got our Bluetooth connected. We have connected the vehicle to the scan tool. And I'm just going to show you quickly in the settings, preferences, logging, which PIDs that I've chosen for this. You only need four. Engine RPM, intake air temp, mass airflow, and throttle position. So once you get those selected, you can go back to the main screen. We'll click on logs, menu at the top right, and we'll do our logging right there. Now for this, we need to do some different kind of driving conditions. So we want to have it idle for a little bit. We're going to do some wide open throttle in park or neutral. And then uh, I'm going to do some heavy acceleration. I'm going to try to go from a dead stop, floor it uh, to the point where we make the 1-2 shift and then get up to 50 miles an hour. And that should be good. Um, and then we'll do some deceleration, some light acceleration. And with all of that information, we'll be able to get a good idea of what the volumetric efficiency looks like on this Ford today. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start logging and then we'll come back when we start analyzing the data. All right, so we got all the data we needed and we exported our CSV file. Uh, we've opened it now in Excel and I've already done all of the equations and stuff so you didn't have to watch it in the video. So I'll just kind of quickly go over what those are. Um, so when we had the, the data originally, it was just time, RPM, mass airflow, intake air temp, and throttle position right here. And then we calculated some extra lines of data here in order to get ultimately this one, which is our volumetric efficiency. So the formulas that we're using, let me show you those real quick. They're here. So this is the volumetric efficiency formula, but in order to have the D, which is density, uh, that formula is up here. And notice it includes things like the intake air temp has to be in Kelvin. So that'll be one thing we'll have to convert. Uh, the P is barometric pressure, but it has to be in Pascal. So that's another thing that we'll have to do some math on. And then, um, yeah, and I do have those formulas down here. Fahrenheit to Kelvin's here. Uh, inches mercury to Pascal's is right there. So, yeah, let's go back to here and you'll see this line. Well, let's start with Pascal's. This line, what I did is I looked at the local, um, the barometric pressure in our area when I was doing the test, and then I took that number and multiplied it by that constant right there that was in the formula. Um, okay, so now I have Pascal's all the way down. I did the conversion for Kelvin right there, so I took the intake air temp, which was in Fahrenheit, added that number times the five ninths. That was all in the formula. And then used those two numbers in the density formula and then use the density back into our volumetric efficiency formula. So you can see that right there. And then obviously I went through and, you know, made it look nice, controlled the decimals, converted this to percentage, stuff like that. So uh, anyways, the thing I did to make this a little easier is I made this little chart so you can see where we were doing idle, where our light acceleration was happening, where our heavy acceleration. So this whole beginning right here in light blue, that is our idle range. And you'll notice that our volumetric efficiency is very low in idle and that's completely normal, right? Throttle is mostly shut at idle. Um, and since the throttle is blocking all the airflow, then obviously you're not filling up the cylinder with the air that is possible. So we're only getting in the 25% range most of the time during idle. During the green, uh, this is light acceleration. So you get a little bit higher. I think the highest in this range is like this 42% right there. And oh, I guess I got a little higher over here, 59%. Okay, this zone here was our first um, our hard acceleration. So from a stop all the way, like I floored it till it made the one, two shift and then we got over 50 miles an hour. So in this zone, this is where we should see the best volumetric efficiency is and it's right there, 112%. Uh, most, most of the other times you're seeing like in the 80%. But if I never got it, like if, if I did this and I never got over 85%, that would be, that would be a, a problem to me because most engines these days are getting over 85% by design. 
And so if I wasn't getting 85% at least during this, I'd start looking at maybe if my mass airflow sensor is calculating wrong, because remember that's part of our equation. Um, or maybe your engine just having trouble breathing. Maybe it's got back pressure issues or something, but that looks good. That's exactly what we want. Here's our first D-cell. That's when it gets pretty bad. As far as volumetric efficiency goes, we slam that throttle shut. Our second acceleration, not nearly as good as the first. We're getting up in highest, I think is 81%. Second D-cell right here got, yeah, right there. And then I did a couple snap throttles while in park. And so you snapped it really hard, you get as high as 73%. And then as soon as that throttle shuts, it dropped to its lowest 8%. And I did two of those. Okay, now the difference between a snap throttle in park versus like going wide open throttle while driving is there's no load. So that's why you're not seeing quite as high of the numbers as you do during that hard pull. Okay, so at the top, just to help myself out, I did a formula to find the minimum, which was that 8%, find my maximum, which is that 112. And during that whole four minute test drive that I did, we averaged like 33%. So anyways, that is how you can use your data logging to calculate volumetric efficiency. And like, it's pretty useful, especially if you're, like I already showed you another way in a different video on how to diagnose a mass airflow sensor, but you could, you could use this to diagnose your mass airflow sensor as well. And, and I already discussed that a little bit, but overall figuring out if your engine's breathing properly and all that stuff, this is, this is a good test.